L'épisode 13 était vraiment plus focusé sur les montages et l'édition des vidéos et du podcast des Allure Technologies. Au début de l'épisode 13, on vous a montré comment on a fait l'intro qui est disponible à partir de l'épisode 5 jusqu'au suivant. On l'a fait à la ville de saint lambert Aussi, le podcast fait avec Philippe Aboussin, technicien audiovisuel et entrepreneur, est maintenant en ligne sur son cloud. Vous pouvez avoir accès au podcast sur la page Facebook des Allure Technologies. Simple, Allure Technologies. Pour conclure cet épisode, vraiment, on s'en va à Montréal pour aller interviewer Salim, jeune entrepreneur et programmeur d'applications mobiles. Épisode 14 du blog Allu Technologie Road to the IPO. Aujourd'hui, on fait les podcasts et les vidéos en même temps. Aujourd'hui, je vais vous introduire Salim, jeune étudiant et entrepreneur, et aussi programmeur et développeur d'applications mobiles. Fait qu'on passe tout de suite en anglais avec Salim. Hi Salim. How's it going? Fine, and you? Fantastic. Thanks for Fantastic. asking. Fantastic. I just introduced you in French. Can you talk to me about you now? For sure. Um, so, uh, we actually met, uh, for the audience that doesn't know, at Startup Fest. Uh, Startup Fest is a fantastic festival where yeah. all the entrepreneurs around the world actually collectively come downtown Montreal okay. uh, and, uh, and network and uh, pitch for startups. Uh, so, I was there and you were there as well and we met and we definitely clicked. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, in the past I've developed apps uh, with uh, my business, Milmolabs.com. Yes. Um, uh, without the help of my, my fantastic team, I would be uh, nowhere where I am uh, with mobile apps today. Okay. Um, in addition to that, uh, with my passion of biotechnology, I, uh, I founded humanplus.ca. Okay. Um, it is a biotech business. Um, really pushing forward the envelope on transhumanism. Yes. Um, and so, yeah, other than that, there's a, a bunch of stuff I can start, start talking about, but um, but yeah, let's start, let's get into this. Okay, so you you are an entrepreneur, but also you are a student. So you're going to school, like, tell me, how do you do work, business and school at the same time? Uh, I mean, it's, I think just to preface this by saying it's very, very important for everyone to go to school. Yes. I mean, a lot of people have the notion of becoming an entrepreneur and dropping out right away. I mean, by no means uh, an extremely successful entrepreneur at all. Okay. I mean, I'm just having fun and, and you know, making a business here and there. Uh, I'm, I'm not at a million dollar mark or anything like that. But as a student, uh, it's very difficult to juggle a lot of stuff. Uh, not only am I working uh, a regular job, but okay. I am also... Um, uh, you know, running multiple businesses or uh, trading stocks on the side or yeah. uh, uh, mining cryptocurrency. A bunch of these things um, add together into a hectic school schedule and something that uh, that I I think requires a lot of organization skills, yeah, but yeah. it's very, very simple and it's not that difficult. So you're going to school, you work at HP, is that right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. And then now you have Human, Human Plus. So just say like you're not successful, successful. for me, I, I really think you are because you are smart and I want to ask you some questions. So why did you choose programmation? Why did you choose technology? Um, I think I'm very wired to having a, a futuristic um, future, really. Uh, everything you see in these sci-fi films is extremely interesting to me. Um, I think we're born in the in probably the best time ever. Yeah. Um, I can't say that about the future, of course, because I don't look into. I, I haven't seen the future. Yeah. Um, but I mean, looking into where we are today, uh, from 1990s uh, really to 2017, now we yeah. saw number one the internet boom, which created a bunch of opportunity. It's still doing that currently. Um, in fact, I have my laptop in front of me, and I'm making more. I'm making my, my income through the internet, yes. uh, which would be unheard of in the 2005 era or uh, you know, for the average person to be working on the internet. Now there's working at home jobs. We we're really seeing the revolution of the uh, humans on earth. Internet really connected everyone. Uh, and uh, without this, I wouldn't be where I am today. Yeah, I mean, I've learned a lot of things through the internet. Uh, programming, uh, designing, uh, learning about stocks, everything has been done through the internet. All by yourself? 
Well, I mean, internet uh, is a very fantastic resource. I don't think a lot of people know. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people uh, watch YouTube videos and tutorials about yes. DIY uh, tips and tricks and things like that for their household. And I mean, that can be extended beyond that. I mean, you can truly do everything on the internet now. Yes, it's true. Yeah. Um, not only that, it's not only the internet. I mean, we're seeing the rise of insane um, revolutions um, right now. We are seeing uh, computers in the palm of our hands. Yes. We can literally uh, ask any, any, anything to our personal assistant. Like imagine 20 years ago, you told someone you had a personal assistant in your pocket, AKA Siri or Google Home or whatever it may be. And you can ask it its weather and it tells you the weather <laughs> and you can have a conversation with a robot. Uh, and now we have these wireless earphones where you can just put them in your ear. Yes. We have augmented reality coming out so you can uh, virtually navigate the real world on Earth and converge technology and, and normal life. I mean, this is the best time to yes. be living. Like phones really change. Everything changed when you have this. Like, as for me, now you can do blogs and everything. Yeah. And for you, you can program and make money like right now on your computer. So, and that's for a lot of people too. A lot of people they knew what you do and what I do. So it really changed changed everything with phones and, in, and the internet. Hundred yeah. percent. Um, and just to tack on to that, uh, I did say about the internet in the 1990s, and now it's now where we are right now. Uh, currently, we're seeing the boom of the financial uh, industry right now with cryptocurrency. Uh, so we're in 2017 right now. It started to boom in 2013. Yes. Uh, but you'll see in the future everything, uh, almost a lot of things will be blockchain technology uh, driven. Um, and so right now we're actually living in a great time of uh, financial disruption. Um, first we had gold as a commodity because people didn't believe in, uh, well, they didn't invent currency. Yes. And then afterwards we had paper currency. Uh, now we have that paper currency in banks on a digital uh, platforms, so yes. your debit card, your credit card, etc. And now we're seeing Bitcoin and Ethereum and uh, all of these other cryptocurrencies that will be the next big thing. So that's the future of finance. That's what you believe, like cryptocurrency is gonna be the future. 100%, 100%. I mean, just for an example, a lot of people don't know what cryptocurrencies are. Yes. Uh, but if I were to send $40 million to China, uh, using the traditional method, it would take weeks. Not only that, the uh, transaction fee of that would be insane. insane. The banks will be the middlemen in that. However, with cryptocurrency, it's like sending an email. You're literally sending a certain amount of money through code, uh, a bits and hashes, and you're sending it as if you're sending an email to yes. the person, and they get the money instantly. Imagine sending $40 million instantly to China with the same transaction. So it's going to be fast, secure, and there won't be any problem after. Super secure, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's great. Because that's what I want to ask you. Like, you know I'm doing like a mobile app for finances just to pay with your phone. So I want to ask you, what, like, a startup that want to go in that market, what they, what do they need to do? So, like a mobile payment. You know, there's a lot of competition you see from Apple Pay, Google Pay, and then you see Chinese apps that come in here, like Alipay, which are, what's like, like an advice for me as, a, as I'm doing this. For sure, no, I'm by no means, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I don't, I'm you, can not, you go ahead. You can say the truth and everything. For sure, uh, I'm not extremely into this uh, mobile payments business, yeah. so I don't know a lot about it. But just from first glance, what I would say, there's a couple of key things you need in a mobile payment system. Okay. Uh, right now, the debit card is booming. I haven't touched cash since. Well, I don't remember. It's been a couple of years since I've actually handled cash. I've okay. always used debit card. And the reason why it's super convenient. Yes. So the first thing you need to do is have a convenience of adding that card to your phone. Okay. Card or bank or linking it, whatever the case may be, you need to have that, number one, uh, successful. Okay. Uh, the faster you can get that, the better. And the second part is uh, the convenience of paying for it. Is it going to be faster than a debit card? That's what's key. Yes. If you take out your wallet and you want to Number one, you have to take out your wallet, then you have to take out the card and you pay for it. You put a card back in your wallet and you put it back in your pocket. Uh, it needs to be fast. Right. Like and your phone, it's super easy. You don't take it out of your wallet. Yes. You have it straight up, so that's pretty awesome. Okay. Um, but the key thing is, you don't want people questioning, do these people take, uh, you know, Alulu Tech Alu, Pay? Yeah, Alu, Alu Pay. Alu pay. Um, do these people take this? Do this? Over here, probably 99% of businesses are taking debit cards yes. so that's not an inconvenience for me so that's something that should be implemented in mobile payments I believe yeah so we had to change a little bit of the scenery here um, you know we're changing the scenery but nothing's changing uh, we're entrepreneurs we got to adapt to the certain situations and uh, here we are we're adapting uh, so Hugo yes 
So I know that you did Mimo Labs and you just told me that you quit. What happened? Why did you decide to quit Mimo Labs? Well, Mimo Labs was a fantastic company and with fantastic people. However, I saw that the app market was being a little bit too saturated. Yes. Uh, I feel like we did our due diligence in making uh, making apps affordable to people, yes. and we provided great services for different uh, different clients and different okay. budgets. Uh, and so I found that I got really bored of the apps now, and I wanted to find something new. Uh, I find that if you're constantly stimulating your mind on something new, a next generation business idea, then you're constantly moving up the up, up, the, up life in terms of experience and how okay. to do things. So th now you say that you believe that it, the mobile application is a uh, market, it's all saturated, so there's no chance for any other, any other people that, that want to go in, in that. Well, that's not, that's not completely true. Uh, saturation doesn't mean it's negative. Okay. Um, so you can see, uh, I can create a shoemaking company right now, but it's shoemaking has been here for uh, thousands of years. Okay. Uh, so shoemaking is not something uh, that's a bad business at all. Uh, just because it's saturated doesn't mean it's bad. Websites are saturated. doesn't mean you're not going to be making money okay. or going to be create a successful business. So there's yeah. way to still making money in that and going that. Right. I just find excitement when I'm doing a business okay. when it's, uh, in the beginning stages of the of the business. So for example, cryptocurrency is in its beginning stages. That's why I'm getting into it. Biotech, yeah. beginning stages. That's why I really love and that's where I have the most fun. So if I stay in a place where I'm not really having fun, it's not doing me a favor, it's not doing other people yes. a favor, you know? Yes, yes. So let's talk about something more exciting. Biotech, man. I, uh, I know that you're doing Human Plus. Tell me about it. What's that? What? Uh, Human Plus was uh, was launched in, uh, in regards to making uh, or, or upgrading the human race to a transhuman future. Yeah. Uh, so when I say that, what I mean by that is uh, is uh, upgrading the physical, biological human body with technology. Yes. Right now we have phones, uh, supercomputers in our pockets, and we're utilizing it. And uh, uh, but there's still a gap between it. If I were to take away your phone, you can't access it. Uh, anywhere else yes it's true. so it's time to merge the human body with technology and it shouldn't be something that's scary uh, we have this already in medical hospitals and things like that people get a surgery and they get rods in their in their legs yes. and their arms uh, people get neural implants for arthritis and things like that uh, and I truly believe it's not something that people should be afraid of but rather embracing it so you say that we already have machines some people have machine inside them so there's no like it's, this is not something new but I mean, is it safe in the terms of hacking? Like somebody comes comes and steals everything inside your information. Is it safe? Sure. That? Now, uh, in terms of hacking, everything I believe is hackable. Yes. Uh, we have the iPhone that every single year has been hacked and been uh, patched, and every single time it's been hacked, every single thing is hackable. Uh, the only thing is how likely is it to be hacked? Okay. In, a, in accordance to this uh, chip that I have um, uh, developed, it's not necessarily hackable uh, directly easily. Okay. Number one, it actually requires the device to be directly touching it in okay. order to transfer data. Okay. More so, it doesn't have a power supply. It only gets power from the device that you're using, such as your phone, okay. when you actually touch against it. So wirelessly, you actually can't access it anywhere. If I'm in China and you're in the US, I can't access your chip at all. It's not connected to the internet. Okay, good. So that's one thing. And secondly, you know, you would think, oh, maybe someone can come by and uh, and just swipe your, your yeah. phone against you, right? Can it happen? It could happen, but there's something great about RFID technology. You can put a password against it. Okay. More so, I don't believe a lot of people would be afraid of this because I want to point out the obvious that debit cards have tap to pay now. Yes. A lot of people can just come around the terminal and, and, and enter an amount and just touch it on your back pocket because that's where most people keep their cards okay. and steal all your money right there. But people aren't doing that. Okay. It's just not something that's a big concern. Okay. Same way here. Actually, it's even difficult here because your our hand is moving all the time. Okay. You really have to be sleeping for someone to even touch your hand, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, I mean, you'll notice it. So. so it's gonna be good for credit information and debit card when you put that inside because it, it's going to have a code so people won't have access onto them. I mean, sometimes you really don't want to have a code. For example, you want to have your medical records like your blood type, for example. Yes. If you if you were to, uh, God forbid, get paralyzed or get into a coma somewhere on the streets, people would know, you know what, scan his hand, you will have all his identification info, where he lives, his blood type, so we can actually give him blood. Yes. Uh, to you know, make you alive. Uh, there is no information other than your phone they can check because okay. they really don't know you. There's no facial records any, anywhere else. They can't scan you, you know. 
So let's just, I just want to say something. Salim has one inside his hand. So yeah. we don't really see it right now, but if we, he has one in his hand, and fuck, the day I see this guy with that, <laughs> <laughs> I say, oh my God, he's so, he's so crazy. He's fascinating. So I mean, it, you know, pushing the envelope of technology, biotechnology, yeah. if you're going to be the person that's uh, providing the technology, okay and you have a company that you're promoting a product for and yeah. you don't truly believe in that product, forget about it. Don't no, run that business. You have to believe, yeah. You have to believe in the product you're selling. And uh, and doing so, I when I developed this, I truly believed in it. Yeah. I want this to be successful. I want the transhuman future. Uh, I will embrace it while it's here. Yeah. So I did ship myself. Uh, I do have contact information in my hand right now so I can go to a investor, a VC. Actually, this actually happened. I went to an investor yeah. uh, and I explained him the technology and he said, you know what, just give me your number. We'll talk about it later. I said, no problem. I took his phone and I scanned my hand and I gave him my phone number. Uh, so okay. that's- And his reaction? What happened? <laughs> I mean, he was definitely speechless. Yeah. I mean, it's something that's the future of technology. Okay. When you when you were to tell someone in 1990, oh, you know what? I can just talk to talk to Siri and ask it anything. They'll think you're crazy. And this is currently what it's at right now in biotechnology. Okay, good. Yeah. So did it hurt? Did you have any pain when you insert that chip inside your hand? Not at all. I mean, a lot of people think that it would be a lot of pain. Uh, it's, to, to quote unquote surgery. Uh, even that's overblowing it in proportion. Okay. Really, it's an injection. Okay. Like a blood t blood uh, blood test you get, it's you really don't feel it. It's a poke, um, and it's over in less than 10 seconds. You just place it in and you take it out, and you just put a bandage over it as if nothing happened. Okay. Um, and really, it, it honestly does not um, require that many um, uh, experienced surgeons or practitioners to do it. However, okay. we do provide an experienced surgeon in, in the Montreal area to do it. Okay, so let's talk about the cost. Is it very expensive, like $10,000? You know, how much it costs? I mean, a lot of people think that it's expensive and naturally when technology is in the beginning stages, it's very expensive. Yeah. But right now, it's actually extremely, extremely inexpensive. Okay. RFID chips have been around in the market for several years yeah. and we're just putting a bioglass encapsulating it and, uh, and making it safe for the hand. So okay. it's only $249 for the hand. If you're in Montreal, you actually get free, uh, free installation okay. on this. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, if you want both your hands, because you know you want the right hand to do something else and the left hand to unlock your door, uh, whatever the case may be, we have $349 okay. for both two hands. Uh, the price may change in the future, of course, as technology progresses, we, make it, we can make it even cheaper than that later on. Okay, let me tell you something, I'm your first customer. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Bro. Okay, good. So my next question is about social media. Social media changed our life and personal and now you can connect with everybody in a, in all around the world so but i'm i'm gonna just go like more in the business side how can social media help grow a business or start your own business i mean we saw this in uh, in newspapers where people put advertisements in yeah. this media and they grew their business uh, through attracting people that are reading the newspaper we saw this in the radio as well, audio ads now. Yeah. Now we see it in television, visual ads. Yeah. Now we see it on the internet, uh, visual ads again. But there's one key thing in the radio, television, and newspaper industry. There was a huge monopoly over okay. them. Uh, so there wasn't that big of a, of, um, of a push to grow smaller businesses. But the internet is a free-for-all. There is no monopoly. Uh, when you call to get TV service over here, at least in Canada, they ask you, what channels do you want? When you ask... Do you, uh, if you want the internet installed at your house, they don't ask which websites do you want. You have internet and you can access unlimited. Yeah. It's a one-time thing. So if you have the internet at your disposal, which is the next generation after te television, okay. you have the potential to attract not only the people in your country, but people worldwide, billions of people. So do you believe there's going to be another social media platform? All the time there's going to be a new social media platform. I mean, I didn't even anticipate Snapchat to take yeah. over. I thought Facebook had it all underhand. underhand. Facebook owns uh, Instagram, WhatsApp, and, and countless other uh, social media platforms. Yes. Um, and now we're seeing Snapchat just destroying everyone single-handedly and they're getting buy offers for billions of dollars and they're still not doing anything. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy, but we're gonna see another one. It, it's, it's, no, it's gonna be a matter who's of Who's gonna go down? Who's the one who's gonna go down? Well, Facebook's definitely not gonna go down. Yeah. Uh, and that includes its businesses like Instagram, uh, WhatsApp, and, uh, and others. Uh, as for Snapchat, it's, it's a different story. Um, the only way I believe it can be successful yes. is through funding. However, their stock has been going down significantly. Um, because they're not turning in profits. And what about the glasses they say? You know, the glasses they want to do, 
Uh, they sold about 45,000 glasses in mm -hmm. last quarter. That's actually not impressive. No? Uh, no, because I, Apple is, I know it's very counterintuitive to compare Apple to Snapchat, but yes. their valuations are pretty insane already. Uh, you see Apple selling millions of phones and Snapchat has, has sold less than 100,000 glasses. And Snapchat's user base is millions per day. Okay. So it's not really, uh, really impressive. We don't know yet, so it's gonna take another maybe two, three years to know who's gonna who's gonna be the real winner. That let's say Facebook is killing everybody. Instagram just put Insta stories, so Snapchat's going down. But I'm I'm predicted in the next two, three years, Snapchat needs to do something bigger than that what he's doing right now. So. Yeah, Snapchat's creative team is pretty awesome. Okay. Uh, so uh, I mean, fingers crossed they do something crazy, but. For now, nothing right now. So let's go to the last part of this podcast and give me three advices like for entrepreneurs that want to start a business or students that want to get better at doing what they do and all that. I mean, in regards to students, it's very important. I'm going to talk in regards to young people that yes. are starting the businesses. Number one, you need to be organized uh, and you need to be consistent. Okay. Uh, consistency is probably key over every single thing otherwise. Uh, I mean, today we're looking at, um, I mean, even, even now you, people say, oh, time is going by so quickly. Well, time is consistent every second. It doesn't stop for a second, it doesn't lag. <laughs> no, it doesn't stop. Time is, time is consistent. So after, uh, after when you see, oh man, time has gone by fast because it's been consistent. I mean, no, time doesn't go as fast as before. It's, it's the impression we have of time that exactly. goes faster. Because for millions and millions of years, we always had 24 hours a day. So now we're only just going faster and faster. We, have, we want to do a lot, of, a lot of stuff. So we believe that time goes faster, but it's just an impression. You know? Yeah, it's an impression. Now, likewise, if you start a business and you're yeah. consistent with it, um, you won't find that, oh, you haven't done so much progress. But when you look back and see, You've actually done the most progress you can possibly do and it'll succeed. It'll yeah. guaranteed succeed if you're consistent and you have the right tools and methods and um, and yeah, above all you have to be organized to be consistent. So utilize uh, your phone, uh, there's calendar apps, to-do list apps, uh, utilize what you have, the technology that, yes. that that's in the society today yeah. and uh, be organized. Yeah. So first advice, manage your time, be consistent. consistent. Yeah. And the second one? And the second one is really uh, is talk less, do more. That's yes. what I that's what I like to say a lot. Um, when you keep talking about what you're going to be doing, that's not giving any help in what you're going to be doing yes. in the future. Uh, working more because you're going to be having a lot of failures. Uh, there's going to be less success, more failures. Okay. Uh, every 99 failures, there's going to be one success, but you only have to be right one time. Yes. And once you're right, that's not a problem. You'll have funding for the next uh, venture you'll do possibly. Good. Yeah. And the last one. Uh, and truly the last one is, uh, I mean, do what you love and believe in because if you don't do what you love and believe in, you'll give up after the first or two obstacles. Okay. Uh, as soon as the first obstacle comes, you'll feel like, is it really worth it? Because you won't have that passion and drive to do it again or, or keep working on it. Uh, but once you have that passion and, and believe in the product, that obstacle doesn't, doesn't mean anything to you. It just means it's a roadblock that you'll have to go over okay. in order to get to the next goal. However, when you're not passionate in something, that's, that gives you an excuse to stop. Yes, it's true. Because in your mind, you're thinking, you don't really like what you're doing, so give me an excuse to stop. When the first obstacle comes, it'll give you an excuse. Let's say you go over that excuse, but that doesn't stop there. There's going to be hundreds of obstacles that are going to come. Yes, but I mean, there's a lot of people that say, I don't know what to do. So. For, for that, I believe you just have to try everything. Maybe yeah. you don't like something, but the next one is going to be the next thing that you like, and then you're going to focus on that, and you're going to win. Yeah. And, you know, after all, we are going to die anyway. So. Yeah, we're all going to die, man. So, <laughs> yeah. We are going to die. So Make the most of it, I guess. I guess, you know? That's it, man. So, thank you, Salim. My pleasure. Nice to meet you again. Yeah. Fantastic. And... Uh, Ceci conclut l'épisode 14 du Road to the IPO et le podcast de Centre Entrepreneur Aguerri, Road to the IPO, à la technologie.